second largest market in Southeast Asia. Uh, it's a top 10 export market for New Zealand and our products and services. So it's an important day today to, to make sure that we're building relationships and deepening those relationships uh, with the political leadership here as well. Uh, obviously good news at home. It's great to see that inflation uh, is tracking down, uh, hitting 4% today. There's a lot more work for us to do, but as we said, we need to rebuild the economy to lower the cost of living. Uh, and obviously the budget will pay, play a key part in that as well. So um, good news at home. What we really want to do is be able to lower inflation so that we can lower interest rates, so that we can actually grow our economy and keep people in employment. Uh, that's really much what we're focused on. So with that, happy to take your questions. Why don't you go into bat for those Kiwi brothers that got locked up uh, down in Phuket after that incident last month? Oh, look, there's a process that needs to play out here. It's a matter before the courts here in Thailand, uh, and that needs to be worked through. Yeah, do you think, though, if maybe you put in a good word for them, you know, it might lead to some leniency or maybe might help them get them home a bit quicker? Well, look, again, you know, it's important that we let the process here in Thailand uh, play out. Uh, it's a matter before the courts, uh, and it's entirely appropriate that that happens. Yeah, there's a large numbers of Myanmar, uh, Myanmar people now fleeing across the border into Thailand because of the war in, in Myanmar. Do you think this regional conflict might come up you know, in your bilateral discussion? Today? It will be a discussion uh, around just regional politics in particular. As you know, Thailand has a very long border with Myanmar. Uh, there's up to, I think, you know, there's, there's, there's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that have come into Thailand as a consequence of that. Uh, you know, Thailand is managing what is a very difficult situation, uh, and I look forward to talking to the President. Prime Minister, a bit more about that. Can we imagine, they're burning people alive, they're decapitating people in this war, they're, they're employing ISIS-like tactics against people in Myanmar. Why on earth are we allowing them to come to this this weekend? Well, let me be clear about that. I mean, we condemn outright the coup that took place. We condemn the leadership. Uh, and what we've done is made sure that uh, we're hosting an ASEAN meeting in New Zealand. We are not a full member of ASEAN. We're hosting that meeting. Uh, and the ASEAN position uh, is one, one that you know is about making sure there's no political leadership from Myanmar in the conversations in ASEAN. But it is a belief that there is value in actually having uh, constructive dialogue uh, with officials in particular. And so this is a mid-level official meeting. Uh, we have ourselves put in place very strong travel bans against the leadership uh, from, from Myanmar. We condemn outright the coup uh, and what is happening there. Uh, but uh, in terms of hosting an ASEAN meeting uh, for mid-level officials, uh, that is a policy of ASEAN to make sure that they can continue some engagement and dialogue. Is it fair to Australia describe a director of... Sorry? Australia wouldn't let them they banned them from coming just last month when you went to the ASEAN meeting uh, there. Yes, and that's what I'm saying is different... Be, 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 well, that... The, the position is, is within ASEAN is that the political leadership is not participating in any of the conversations, meaning the political leadership of Myanmar, uh, the coup and the military leaders that we condemn. Uh, but, but in terms of actually at an official level, when there are many, many ASEAN meetings that take place uh, multiple times a month across this region, uh, they, they want to make sure they maintain some engagement with officials uh, and keep that dialogue open. Is it fair to describe, though, the director of, an ASEAN, of ASEAN affairs as a mid-level official? Uh, well, it is an officials' meeting. Uh, that's what this is. Um, well, it's not a high-level political meeting as took with the ASEAN prime ministers and, and presidents no, uh, in Melbourne recently. He's a official, isn't he? Well, he's an official, and I just say it's an officials-level meeting. There are many of these meetings that take place across the ASEAN uh, region. Um, these ASEAN countries get together very often, uh, and they have a lot of series of meetings. Uh, and the policy of ASEAN has been to make sure that there is engagement at an official level, but there is no uh, representation at a political level. That's my prime minister invited President Putin here. Yeah. Well, those are decisions for Thailand. That's a sovereign nation that can make its own decisions. It will have its own independent foreign policy in the same way that we do in New Zealand. Um, we have our own independent foreign policy. Uh, we, we collaborate with a range of partners and countries around the world in terms of areas like trade and climate change and a whole bunch of other agendas. We also, where we have differences in values, we, we raise those uh, pri you know, privately, publicly, uh, consistently, predictably. Will you raise that uh, it's not something that I've talked about. I wanted to spend more time on geopolitical uh, politics in particular uh, in the region, uh, but there's obviously a lot of things we want to talk through. You've spoken about the importance of a two-state solution in Gaza. Sorry? You've talked about the importance of the two-state solution in Gaza conflict. Um, Prime Minister Lee on Monday said a small nation state is set up. Have you asked any advice on uh, New Zealand potentially recognising Palestine as a state? Uh, look, what I'd say to you is that we've had a long-standing position of wanting to make sure that the Middle East peace process is re-engaged and ultimately with an outcome being a two-state solution. Uh, what we need to focus on right now uh, is actually humanitarian assistance and the lives and livelihoods of the Palestinians that are being impacted by this catastrophic uh, conflict. Uh, that is where our focus should be. Uh, what we should be encouraging all the parties to do is to make sure that Hamas releases the hostages. Uh, Israel has, uh, you know, needs to get humanitarian
humanitarian aid in there, but they most importantly need to get round all sides need to get around the table and actually resolve this thing peacefully, not through military contact. I, I, ultimately, uh, we will get to a conversation around uh, a Palestinian state and a two-state solution. But for right now, uh, the focus for everybody has to be on making sure those parties even get to the table uh, to start that process and start back that conversation. Home, back home, it's been um, the biggest state for public service proposed cuts for um, Ministry of Education and Ordinary uh, both of those places, your government have said that they don't have to return a um, dividend that is said reinvested. Do you think those cuts are excessive? Uh, no, those are decisions ultimately for the CEOs of those respective agencies. Uh, New Zealanders expect us to make sure that we cut down the waste, uh, we end the wasteful spending, and actually priori we prioritise our frontline services, our public services. And so I appreciate, and I've seen a number of roles uh, in both education and within Oranga Tamariki, uh, I appreciate some of those roles are vacancies and, and, and others will be uh, real job losses. That will be a, a tough time for those individuals that have been impacted. But New Zealanders expect us to make sure that every dollar is actually directed to towards delivering an outcome. And so that's why um, you can be confident that as we go through the budget, there'll be an increase in support and resources and funding uh, for Oranga Tamariki and education. There's been concern that the Ministry of Education uh, ones could be moving into frontline areas. Is that something that you would not feel comfortable with? What we, what we are very focused on is making sure we actually end the wasteful spending and the back office bureaucracy, and we make sure that that money and those resources, we do smarter things with it to enhance the frontline services. As I've said before, you know, I want more you know, I want more medical doctors, not spin doctors. And so that's a good example of what we're talking about. In the context of the budget, um, obviously we'll be wanting to increase investment in OT and education, but we want to make sure everything is delivered towards delivering the targets that we've set ourselves around attendance and academic achievement uh, and upgrading our frontline services. Those jobs, were, those jobs were in disability and migrant services, so is that something that they're not spin doctors? No, I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying to you is I'm being very clear with the New Zealand people and they expect this. Let's be clear, there's been a massive amount of bureaucracy that's built up in our system. There has been a huge amount of wasteful spending. And what we've said to the CEOs of those agencies is make sure that every single person, every single dollar, every resource, you've got to keep working at that to make sure that it's focused on the frontline services and delivering better outcomes for New Zealanders. They've made decisions around stopping programs, about um, removing waste, uh, dealing with roles that they don't think deliver as well as they should or could. I appreciate that's tough at a very much at a personal level, but New Zealanders expect us to make sure that we move the resources from the back office, that are bureaucracy, right to the frontline services that deliver better services for them. Thai visa costs have skyrocketed. Sorry? You have quite a bit of problem with Susan Townsend, um, both coming from a business world. When he first came into government, he went on basically a bit of a world tour to try and get Thailand out to the world. There was a public bash, backlash and he ended up suspending his travel for two months because the public hated it so much. Are you confident that this is what Kiwis want you to do to get out in the world? Oh, look. Uh, I've been at home and I am at home. I can do both. Uh, and you know, if you think about it, I'm taking five days uh, in a working week to actually get uh, around three countries that are very important to our future. Uh, you know, we've got Singapore, Thailand, and the Philippines, uh, and these are places where we know that we can actually grow our economy, our business with these markets. We have an ambitious goal to make sure that we double the amount of um, exports that we have coming out of New Zealand in the next ten years. A big part of it is actually making sure that we've got these relationships. Uh, and I just have felt that New Zealand has been. You know, we have to get out in the in the world World. We have our amazing people, incredible products and services. We have to sell those into these markets, and that's actually how we grow our economy. You know, one in four of our jobs in New Zealand are linked to trade. We, of all the countries in the world, are actually a very much a trading nation. There's five million of us sitting in New Zealand. Uh, there's a big world of eight billion people in 195 countries with rapidly rising middle classes that want New Zealand products and services. So I think we've got the balance right. But you are right. I, I have asked myself and Winston Peters and Judith Collins and Todd McClay uh, to make sure that we are stepping up our engagement, our energy and our intensity and our relationships, because that's actually how we secure our economic prosperity in the future. And, and you've, you've obviously dealt with him before. How much of a relationship do you already have with him? What's he like? Oh, look, I've, I've met him before. We both uh, have some commonality. We both started off working in corporates that competed with each other all around the world. Uh, so we have that common you know, background in terms of coming from outside of politics and coming from the world of business. Uh, he is very much focused on uh, making sure he takes the opportunity of Thailand, of really step changing the Thai, Thai economy. Uh, and he's very, very focused on, on business, economics and, and, and commercially as well. So you know, that's where I think you know, we, we met in Melbourne. Uh, we hit it off very well uh, in a very short period of time, agreed that we should meet again and, and follow forward about how we take this relationship forward. And just, back, um, just back on Anna's question about Oranga Tamariki in particular, it's nearly 10% of that workforce there. How can you 
or can you ensure that no child will be unsafe because of the cuts that are being made at your own yeah, look, I mean, again, we're back, we, and I, we, we made a very principled decision. We've, we campaigned on this, we've talked about this. New Zealanders expect it when you talk to New Zealanders. They do not want to see waste in our public services. They want to know that dollars are being, are being spent and deployed towards the frontline services. In the case of Oranga Tamariki, you know, we have a big job to do to make sure that we have um, to look after our most vulnerable children. It's been a challenged organisation, uh, but actually you know, making sure that those resources are deployed and forward deployed into better caring for those children is what we're trying to do here. And so you will see more investment going into Oranga Tamariki through the budget process, but actually reorganising the resources within Oranga Tamariki to make sure that they are forward deployed into the frontline services to better protect and look after those children is exactly what we should have to do. But and we're going to have to keep... We have to keep we are, we are going to make sure that there is more investment going into Oranga Tamariki is what I can say about the budget. The budget will come out at the end of May, but uh, with respect to education and Oranga Tamariki, we will have more investment, but we also want to see a better deployment of the money that's going into that orga those organisations so that it's frontline driven. Because part of the problem with um, some of the cuts at Oranga Tamariki, um, and this has been raised before, but they were looking at, for instance, cutting some legal department. Now, the legal department has to issue... Uh, the emergency notices if they need to take a child from an unsafe situation. Would you be comfortable with those goals? Being Again, done? what I'd just say to you is we have a CEO of Oranga Tamariki. We have very clear accountability. Make sure you look after our most vulnerable children for the very best Are of you your not ability. Accountable to our most vulnerable children. Oh, I am, instance? but I am. But what I'm just saying, hear me out. What I was just saying to you was it's, make, it's making sure that we put in the right level of investment in. We're going to continue to invest more into Oranga Tamariki, but we are expecting better outcomes and better results. And if a CEO needs to reorganise their resources and the money and the spend and the people to better organise to deliver towards those goals, that's what this is all about. And so that's a, that's what the New Zealand public expect. They don't expect us just to keep managing the status quo. They want to make sure that wasteful spending, massive bureaucracy, uh, inefficient programs that are not delivering are, are the big questions are asked. There may well be tough choices around that, but it's important that they're actually delivering and uh, they're doing everything they can to focus on the outcomes and deliver better for just New Zealanders. Just a specific question about whether you're comfortable with legal resources that are used those lawyers are used to file emergency notices to take children out of harmful situations. Would you be comfortable I, with them being I want to make sure we better look after our most vulnerable children. How we organise, how we deploy those resources to better do that is, is what, the, what, the, what the CEOs and the agencies are tasked to do. When we say we want to make sure, remove the back office, look at the layers of management that you may have in, in your organisation, make sure that every person is actually working towards delivering better outcomes for New Zealanders. That's what this is about. In the past month, in the past month time visa costs for New Zealand tourists coming here have skyrocketed. What's going on there and, and have we fallen out of favour with finance? Uh, look, I'm not sure. One of the big things we do want to discuss uh, with the Prime Minister is, is tourism. Uh, we need to build back to the amount of tourism we had before COVID. Uh, I think we had you know, 40,000 Thais coming to New Zealand. I think we had over 100,000 New Zealanders coming to Thailand. Uh, those people-to-people -people connections are important, uh, and that's one of the topics of conversation. There haven't seemed to be the same increases across other countries, though, so why has New Zealand been singled out for that? Well, I'm not aware of that, but it's something I'm happy to on talk to. On security, have you been briefed on the number of people with uh, swipe cards, and do you feel comfortable with the amount of people who have access? No, I haven't. Prime yeah. Minister, we were just in a panel there, and a big investor was asking uh, whether the Thai government, whether there were risks to the upside or downside of the climate goals, and essentially seeking a reassurance that the Thai government wasn't going to have if the same question was asked about New Zealand, what do you think the answer would be? And are you hearing from New Zealand, from investors here, about New Zealand's climate goals? I uh, know they understand very clearly that we are determined to deliver on our climate commitments. You know, we are making sure we deliver and we supported the previous administration's emissions reductions budgets. You know, if you think about the 2025, 2030 budgets, we obviously have emissions budget three to work through, which is 2035. Uh, we've also, you know, said very clearly and categorically we're going to deliver on our net carbon zero 2050 goals. Uh, so they understand the same commitment to the goals. As I've said to you, we may go about doing that in a different way uh, from the previous administration, but don't mistake our commitment to the end and the goals. The means may be different. Prime Minister. Prime Minister. Sorry? I understand Sorry. a group of Māori lawyers have written to you. I'm pretty uncomfortable with the way Shane Jones keeps attacking the Waitangi tribunal. Have you, just, have you read that letter? I haven't seen that. Sorry. Are you comfortable with this comment you would have seen in the past? Because I understand Judith Collins, you've had her speak to cabinet following his attacks on the Supreme Court as well. 
Um, I'm not sure that's the last part of that is correct, and I won't talk about what happens in Cabinet. But um, look, I mean, the bottom line is for us is that you know the Waitangi Tribunal is free to take uh, the cases that it wants to take. Uh, we also, as a, as a government elected uh, and parliamentary sovereignty, uh, have, a, have a course of action that we're, we're implementing and working our way through as well. Um, obviously, there's a broader conversation, I think, now needed in an increasingly in a post-settlement world about the role of the Waitangi Tribunal. That's something we talked about in the campaign. It's something that we've talked about as a, as a coalition government as well. Uh, so we'll continue to look at that. Prime Minister, what are some of your social media, um, uh, size of your social media team? Do you, th- you think uh, you're bringing more game than the Labour Party to your social media team? I don't really care. I mean, what it's about is making sure that I communicate the plan that this government has to rebuild the economy, restore law and order, deliver better public services, uh, and whether I do that directly to cons- you know, to the public through social media, uh, whether you know, engaging with, with you and the media is really important. I, my job is to make sure I can communicate on all messages, whether it's digital or traditional formats, uh, to make sure that we get the, our plan uh, communicated out to the New Zealand public. You, you Prime Minister. Still, you just almost accidentally called the public consumers. Is that what you think? No, no, I didn't say that. I said uh, it's about making sure that we actually go direct to the public with our messages, and it's quite okay to use social media and to use digital channels and to go direct as well, as well as use all the channels that are available to us. Prime Minister, what are the top three tangible outcomes that you're looking to get out of this trip to Thailand specifically? Yeah, look, I mean, we really need to make sure that we deepen the people-to-people connections. Uh, You'll understand that education has been a major um, focus here between the relationship between Thailand and New Zealand. Uh, You've got a huge number of Thais that have actually been educated over a number of generations here in New Zealand. It's been a very aspirational place to be educated in. In fact, we have a function this evening with alumni from you know, New Zealand universities that are here. So there's work to do on education. There's also work uh, to def- definitely to make sure that we bring tourism back to the previous levels pre-COVID. Uh, and, and really, you know, the third area for us is to continue to talk about uh, the green economy and what else we can do in those spaces as well. So how are these and, and obviously future foods, you know, and value-added foods in, in primary industries. So how are these events translating into those objectives? How, how does that work? Well, we, again, we you know we, we end up having the conversations leader to leader. Uh, we've got a series of announcements that we'll have as part of our deepening our partnership. And then most importantly, what it does is it sets a work plan for our respective officials and teams uh, to be able to get, get into the workflow uh, and to make sure that they're making advances on getting through the, the blocks or the obstacles or the opportunities that exist in tourism, education uh, and advanced primary industries. Winston Peters says that he's open to foreign investors purchasing property in New Zealand because it's changed in exchange for investment. You've been meeting with high net worth individuals as well as investors during your trip. Has that come up as part of the conversation, either potential to provide property or get special visas? It, it hasn't. I mean, the bigger thing that they... You know, the investor conversations I've been having have been really around it's just difficult to get projects up and running in New Zealand and if you're sitting in different places like Singapore or you know, in other parts of the world and you're sitting on sovereign wealth funds or pension funds uh, and you're looking at all these places that you'd like to invest in New Zealand in theory on paper has quite an attractive proposition and we have to make sure that in practice that actually that money can actually get deployed in New Zealand and projects can get implemented and done so a lot of the conversation has been on just some of those you know, when I've asked them what's, what, what, you know, what do we need to do better, what's working well um, you know, that, that's been a lot of the conversations. It's just hard to get through the bureaucracy and the red tape to get things so done. So that hasn't been You've got to property ownership or something? No, we're... no, it hasn't. I mean, again, you know, we want to make sure that we attract serious investment to New Zealand. Uh, and, you know, those are often a lot of a lot of funds uh, that actually want to be deployed in New Zealand, uh, put to work on things like infrastructure. Thank but what they don't want to do is actually have a situation where they can't get a return on that money that's been invested. Just really quickly, okay. when you're meeting with, uh, with the Thai Prime Minister, you're also taking a business delegation in there, which is somewhat unusual on the trips I've been on it at least. Why are you doing that and does it have to do with both of you coming from business? Was it easier to get that across the line? Yeah, look, I think yeah, we're just very focused to make sure that we build understanding of each other and actually for Prime Ministers to hear directly from their respective business communities in the, new, in the other countries, I think it's a good thing. Uh, in this case, you know, that is the programme set by the, the Thai government, uh, obviously in consultation with our team. I think it's, uh, it's going to be quite a good conversation because it's a great chance for the business delegation to hear directly from a Prime Minister uh, rather than often through where, where they don't often always get that opportunity or they might be engaging with senior ministers or senior officials. Um, so, you know, I think it's I, I, something I've found helpful. It's what I've tried to do by setting up um, direct meetings with business people, whether they're in, a, in Victoria or New South Wales or, or Singapore uh, or here again tonight. And so, you know, that's very useful because, you know, we, we do have a great country and we have a huge potential in front of us and there's huge amounts of investment that we need to be able to attract to New Zealand to help get things done quicker, uh, like infrastructure, so that we can get that benefit flowing through to our people. So, um, so that's how it sort of all hangs together. Thanks very much, cool. everyone. All right, Thank team. you. Thanks so much. Thank you. See ya. Thank you.